the next day, apparently that elevator going up and down, up and down, with them having coughed in it and all that, was no different than somebody who farts in an elevator, right? So they go up and down, and that fart is still in the elevator. And of course, everybody's gonna smell it. Of course, if there's some COVID-19 particles floating around in the air, you're gonna breathe it. And no, no mask is gonna stop that from happening. Uh, it's all in the elevator. So, hi, I'm John Hart, and welcome back to Mr. America Hart. All right. COVID-19 and growing muscle. What does that have to do with each other? Uh, well, for those of you who have had a nice dose of COVID-19, you already know that once you went through it and you came out, and I'm not talking about the ones who had no symptoms at all, okay, which I have a hard time believing that one, but those who actually came through it and had symptoms you guys, afterwards, you started working out again. What was it like? What happened? What did you do to maximize the return from it without falling back? You know, without getting sick again, without, you know, hurting yourself. So that's where we're at. And I say we now because I had a nice dose of it uh, in, in mid-move. You know, just before moving uh, around one side of the country, to another part. Left Los Angeles, left Southern California. Uh, very happy to say, left California. <laughs> uh, that was in the plans for a couple of years in the making. So, on the way out of there, uh, in the process, at a hotel with my wife, having a nice weekend, and kaboom. A couple people had to be rushed to the hospital on the same floor as us uh, with COVID-19. The next day, apparently that elevator going up and down, up and down with them having coughed in it and all of that was no different than somebody who farts in an elevator, right? So they go up and down and that fart is still in the elevator. And of course, everybody's gonna smell it. Of course, if there's some COVID-19 particles floating around in the air, you're gonna breathe it in. And no, no mask is gonna stop that from happening uh, when it's all in the elevator. So. We got a good dose of it at that point, and the battle was on. We went on for nine, nine days with a low-grade fever, and in the end, uh, we killed it, which is good. But then, what was I personally, I'm gonna tell you my part of the story, what was I left with? Uh, I burned off quite a bit of muscle mass killing that thing. I didn't have a lot of body fat in the first place, so when it came down to it, over nine days time, hardly eating any food, low-grade fever, uh, no energy, oxygen levels uh, were not normal, obviously, and not doing much except for sleeping and watching TV. By the end of that time, and getting in the Word of God, of course, by the end of that time, I had less muscle mass than I did in, when I was in junior high school, before I ever touched the weight. And so what did I do? Four things I'm gonna give to you. Number one, I was already vitamined up. I was already vitamin D3 up, K2. I was already cod liver oiled up. I was already multivitamined up, vitamin C, all of the vitamins that they talk about right now, zinc, all of the important ones to stay healthy, especially during the COVID era. I already had those flowing through my system. It did not prevent getting it. So I got, had, had a battle with it. So that was number one. Uh, do I believe that it, helped. Well, yeah, it's better having D, D3 flowing through your system rather than trying to play catch up later on in the middle of the battle, right? So that part I'm happy about. That part I believe did make a difference. And <laughs> that being said, once the battle was on, what did I do? Maximize the rest. Maximize the hydration. Maximize it because the battle was on. And I knew it was serious. So did my wife, both of us had acknowledged that, yeah, COVID is a formidable foe, no doubt. Uh, but we killed it. That's the way it is, we killed it. So we're standing and it's not, at least the, the ones that tried to take us down, the COVID virus part of it that was uh, involved in trying to take us down. So having said that, now we, two things, 
vitamined up. Number two, we rested and hydrated as much as possible. So we could kill those, that thing. That was number two. Number three, when the symptoms started to go away down around day nine, day 10, that was kind of a good feeling. You know, you finally wake up, you have a little bit of energy, your oxygen levels are up, you actually feel like, wow, that's it. I took it down. Instead of going right on out and heading to the gym, instead of going right on out, my wife's a runner and running. We took a little walk. We got outside, got a little bit of oxygen, sunshine, all of that. Took a walk. Took it easy, still, for another seven, ten days. Didn't do anything serious at all. Not even make a demand on ourselves physically. But during this whole time, once it was over with, so that's the third thing, we took the rest to ensure that it was over with and there was no backsliding. It was not going to be another wave of it coming on. You hear stories about these people. They think that they're fine and suddenly, bam, they're not. And that wasn't going to happen to us. So we made sure, even further rest, until we were beyond healed. And then lastly, building muscle. What does that have to do with any of this? Well, when I did head back to the gym, I went back in and I did a proper break-in routine. Now you guys who know me know, I love me a good break-in routine after having a, a, a time away from the gym, even if it's just a one week break from the gym or two week break from the gym, I do a break-in routine. That's five or six exercises, full body. Not really going in to kill it first thing, first time out in the gym, but going in and you know taking my time, playing around with the weights, not bringing my notebook, which has my prior best records, not having any goal with the weights whatsoever, other than to feel good, pump out some weights, and that's workout number one. I do that workout four or five times over the course of uh, seven to 10 days, maybe two weeks even, I'll spread it out, maybe five, six times. I'll do that workout and increase the weight, increase the reps, increase the weight, or increase the, the reps over and over and over again. I did that breaking routine and man, it was the best thing I could have done because when you do that kind of a break in, you're letting your body know what's coming later on. Soon enough though, but later on. And my lungs were the limiting factor coming out of COVID. I could take the oxygen in, the demand for the oxygen from my muscles was there, but wow, it wasn't making it to the muscles. So they were being choked out. That was workout number one. Workout number two was a little bit better. Number three, number four, number five was even a little bit better than that. So those lungs cleared up. The demand that I placed on those lungs seemed to make them get in line faster than most other people. I did not have a lingering cough that hung out for months or months or weeks. Not even. It just quickly cleared up the lungs. And next thing you know, I went back to my favorite routine. Again, you gotta have fun with this. So let's put a positive spin on this. After having killed it, after getting back in the gym with a proper breaking routine, what did I do? Straight to my favorite workout of all time. And that's Mike Menser's ideal routine. By doing that, my enthusiasm was really high. I started working out without any high intensity techniques. Did I do pre-exhaust as prescribed in the ideal routine? To a degree, I only did the isolation exercises first before the compounds. I didn't go quickly from one to the other. I just did whatever work I did and then I made it to the next exercise. But again, not making too much of a demand on myself or pressure or on my system. And having done that, I can say I'm much happier for it because now, you know, now it's months later, I'm able to go and smash away in the gym. I have some high intensity going. I can use different techniques. Look, you survived the thing. You gotta have some fun coming out of it. You gotta have some kind of positive spin on the training. And the best part about it was that muscle mass that I lost, looking like a little middle school kid, junior high school kid, it all started growing and coming back. My appetite started growing and coming back. I started growing the muscle back, just doing a set of every exercise. And it was great. 
It felt great, being highly anabolic, sleeping like a baby. But men, during the day, shirts getting tighter again. You know, all of that felt fantastic. And the muscle mass came back rather quickly, quicker than I thought it would. So basically, during that time period, as it was coming back, I made sure that I was eating calories. I made sure I was eating easy to digest calories because I wanted that to get into my system fast to answer the call for new muscle to grow. So increasing your calories, the details of which, look, it's different for everybody. For me, I could only eat breakfast once COVID had passed, once I killed that thing, I could only eat breakfast. So I went from breakfast to having one other meal during the day and then from that point on I added until I'm eating my usual seven, eight meals in a 24 hour period. And that's where I'm at right now. Feels tremendous because no body fat seems to come on until then a tiny amount of body fat comes on. And that's the part where I know I've maximized gaining the muscle back. At that point I know that I'm back to doing, you know, smaller increases of muscle mass. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I hope you get something out of this. I hope you're encouraged. If you have had that battle and you're coming out of it, I'm encouraging you to do this the smart way. Don't jump back in the gym. Don't jump in there like you're trying to break your own records. Don't try to jump back in there and, and be you know, egotistical about it, trying to impress anybody. I mean, do whatever you have to do, but realize you have a susceptibility to injuring yourself at that point in time because the muscle's growing back so fast, the tendons are not used to being yanked on. So take it smooth, take it progressive over the course of the first few weeks back. And that's it for today. From my heart to you, John Hart. And listen, that disc popping up by the side of my head right now, that's the subscribe button for my channel. Why don't you go ahead and give that thing a little tap and that'll let you know when new videos pop up. Down below, you're gonna see a thumbs up button Go give that a tap as well. It lets YouTube know that you like the videos that I'm doing. I look forward to seeing you next time. Got a lot coming up now. From my heart to you, John Hart. Bye.